Kimi also comes to show how shall a total cutting away of the eczema human genitalia has been practiced for centuries in parts of Africa, generally as one element of a rite of passage preparing young girls for womanhood and marriage. Often performed without anesthetic under septic conditions by lay practitioners with little or no knowledge of human anatomy or medicine. Female circumcision can cause death or permanent health problems as well as severe pain. Despite these grave risks, its practitioners look on it as an integral part of their cultural and ethnic identity and some perceive it as a religious obligation. Female circumcision is currently practiced in at least 28 countries stretching across the center of Africa and north of the equator and Egypt. Although circumcision may be performed during infancy, during adolescence or even during a woman's first pregnancy, the procedure is usually between ages 4 and 12. The operation is generally performed by a traditional birth attendant, an elder village woman or olola. There are three basic types of genital exorcism, although practices vary widely. In the first type, clitoridectomy, part or all of the clitoris is amputated, while in the second, both the clitoris and the labia minora are removed. Infibulation, the third type, is the most severe. After exorcism of the clitoris and labia minora, the labia majora are cut or scraped away to create raw surfaces which are held in contact until they are healed. As the wounds heal, scar tissue joins the labia and covers the urethra and most of the vaginal orifice, leaving an opening that may be as small as a matchstick for the passage of urine and menstrual blood. The overall proportion of women who have undergone each type of circumcision is not known, although clitoridectomy appears to be by far the most common procedure. In 2018, the World Health Organization Director General, Dr. Churches Adenham, made this statement on FGM. Female genital mutilation is a harmful practice affecting millions of girls and women across the world. About 200 million women and girls globally are living with female genital mutilation, and 3 million more undergo this unacceptable act every year. Let's be clear. Female genital mutilation is a violation of human rights and has no medical benefit. It can result in complications and health risks that can have both short and long-term health and social effects on women and girls. We must stop FGM and we must ensure that no health worker performs it ever. We must also ensure that the 200 million women and girls who have already undergone this harmful practice receive high quality care. That's what WHO's new clinical handbook is all about. It provides accessible and practical guidance for health workers to prevent and treat the complications of FGM. It also describes how to provide mental and sexual health support as part of comprehensive care. WHO plays an important leadership role globally on FGM. We're working with health providers in many countries to stop this harmful practice and to ensure women and girls who have already suffered FGM receive quality health care tailored to their needs. I encourage all countries to use this valuable new tool to provide quality care to women and girls affected by FGM and to take action to end this harmful practice. Together, we can create a world free of female genital mutilation. I thank you. Female circumcision is an integral part of the societies that practice it, where patriarchal authority and control of female sexuality and fertility are given. In communities where a person's place in society is determined by lineage, traced through fathers, Female circumcision reduces the uncertainty surrounding paternity by discouraging or preventing women's sexual activity outside of marriage. Indeed, girls have very little choice, given their age and their lack of education and resources. So I was mutilated um, 
when I was less than a year old, yes, I was, I was a baby when I was mutilated. So I didn't feel the instant pain. Although my mommy told me about how I was running temperature about the cotton, oh, but I didn't. I can't remember, of course. So um, my journey concerning FGM started when I attended a conference. I'd always known about female genital mutilation, but I wasn't sure if I was caught. So I attended this conference where they told me about FGM, where we talked about FGM, and then they showed pictures of proper vagina and pictures of vaginas that were caught and i was like okay and then um, some of the participants ran into the toilet so I went i went to check i'm like okay mine doesn't look okay so i went home then and i asked my mom was i caught you know and then she told me yes that I was caught that was my grandmother she was trying to explain the the family rights and a couple of things that surrounded how she circumcised me even though she knew something was wrong about it you know i was devastated for a long time and um, at least i knew i got to know where some of my challenges were coming from in terms of relationship with the opposite sex and all of that so and that was how i, I continued my campaign okay so i had a cause to to intensify the campaign and then um, that's why i've been campaigning against female genital mutilation because of some of the psychological experiences i've been a variety of justifications are given by demographic and health surveys respondents for preparation of the practice. <laughs> I have a minute to take 15 years to film doing, but we won't call a phone here. I just keep she push it more lara. I don't meet the lady. Won't share your phone. By the way, call a phone move doing. I feel be a more funny. I'm a man. She's a woke actor. I'm a man. She's a woke actor. Then you're about to call a phone move doing. I'm feeling you need to speak. Then you're call a phone move doing. But all that you are going to do, then you're call a phone move doing. But I want to talk about phone because you're going to be more. I know since so be how young so be a car kick on our colour for more money man for operation for me. For my she shall be for more. If you're bag well, you go more to me, tell me you want their colour for me, no yeah. Patient is by far the most commonly mentioned reason. Given the medical complications and related consequences of female circumcision, why does the practice continue? The most important reasons, however, probably lie in the social and economic conditions women's lives.